ETN HD production live here with director Salvatore Litvak from Pictures of the Fringe. How did you get involved in the entertainment business? Hey Katie, hey. welcome. <laughs> uh, gee, um, take, going all the way back. So, uh, you know, it was, okay, if you'd asked me when I was a kid what is the best job in the world, I would have said rock star. <laughs> but I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> The second job, clearly, to me as a kid, would be, well, being a director and telling everyone what to do so you can create a whole world that makes a movie, which is awesome, because that was definitely my favorite thing to do. Um, and, uh, but I didn't think that that was possible. You know, I thought that the people who became directors were children of celebrities or something like that. I mean, I didn't know anybody who became a director. It really didn't seem possible at all. Um, so I kind of just went on, a, you know, what I you'd call a more normal path of, uh, uh, you know, going to college and going to law school, which I did. Um, but it was really just kind of inertia, you know, it was just something to do that seemed safe. Um, and I, I was a jock in college. I was on the rowing team, and that's that's really took up all our time and, and energy and focus. And. Uh, and then I got to law school and I thought, my God, I mean, this is real and I'm going to have to be a lawyer and I don't even know what that is and it doesn't <laughs> sound that great to me. <laughs> and, um, and so really while I was in law school, I got very serious about being an artist. I, I had uh, um, been an English major in college, but it was always just reading what was required and now I just went on a tear, uh, you know, sort of exploring my heroes, which at that time were novelists. Um, and then a friend of mine went to film school and uh, said, oh my God, that's, you can go to film school. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> and um, so I just kind of went on these two parallel tracks at the same time. One was I wanted to go to film school. So I just started figuring everything out, how I could do that, even though I had no background. And in the meantime, uh, what I was doing was uh, I was writing poetry and journals and stuff and I, I was in New York, I was at NYU uh, Law School at the time and I'd written these poems um, and I went to a, uh, a poetry reading, like an open mic poetry reading that uh, some organization at NYU was sponsoring. And my poems were much more stories than poems because I've always been one to get into adventures. I mean, I've had many adventures in my life. So these, these poems were more recountings of things that I'd done and seen and uh, with a slideshow of pictures I'd taken and, uh, and, a, and a drummer. <laughs> I had a drummer. It was very performance art, you know, bohemian. And um, so at this reading, I did my sort of poem story with slides and drumming. And the woman who was running the series afterwards said, yeah, that was great we're going to do a new thing and at the next uh, poetry reading we're going to spotlight one poet and uh, so we'll do the spotlight poet for 45 minutes and then have the open mic for the second half of the night and we'd like you to be the first poet oh. and I was very honored and flattered and I said oh that's fantastic that's great and, um, and then she walked away and I thought what have I done because I've written one poem, <laughs> I've read it, <laughs> I have no body of work, and now I have to fill 45 minutes uh, with an audience. And uh, how did it go? Did it turn out in the end? It turned out. It turned out. I, like I said, I just have all these stories, and I just made it bigger, and um, you know, and it was just a, a big performance art piece. And then I, I was doing that in the village. Uh, in New York for a couple of years, kind of living these two lives, law student by day and poet warrior by night. <laughs> and, um, and it was great and it was fun, but I felt like, you know, I, I, I need to really get serious. Um, and I, all these interests that I have, I, I mean, writing and, and telling stories and putting on a visual piece and bringing in other media to support it, it really was another way of saying what I want to do is film. And, you know, I just have to find a way to do that. I, I don't know anyone who's in that field. I don't know how to get to it. But apparently you can go to film school, so I'm going to do that, you know. And, um, you know, I'd already gotten loans to go to law school. So, you know, it seemed to me like the best film school that was affordable was UCLA um, to get an MFA there. And 
they were only going to take 18 people out of 700 applicants. Um, and like I said, I had no background, but I was determined. And uh, I just found out who they were taking and why they were taking and how you become that person, and you know, at least on paper. And I did it. I was just thrilled the day I got that acceptance to UCLA. It was really the turning point. Um, Has the business been what you expected it to be? Uh, I never expected it would be easy. You know, there, there's no when you're a law, when you go to law school. I mean, there's a job waiting for you at the end. Um, here, every movie gets created in a different way. The, there's very few seats at the table. Nobody wants to give you that seat. You have to elbow your way in, and um, and you have to have something, um, you know, to offer. And so I've just always work my ass off basically to to have something to offer um how is your current project going saving lincoln unbelievable unbelievable completely beyond my expectations i mean here's a case you know we're making a lincoln epic a lincoln epic on an independent budget um it, it was a story that nina and i wrote my wife and i and we're determined to tell we're covering the whole presidency uh, from the point of view of Lincoln's best friend and bodyguard, uh, it's a wonderful character that history forgot named Ward Hill Lamon, mm -hmm. a Southerner uh, and Lincoln's closest buddy. He had moved to Illinois, Lamon had moved to Illinois when he was young and became Lincoln's law partner and was the only buddy that Lincoln brought with him from Illinois uh, to Washington, position unspecified. And then what and then he stepped into the role of bodyguard. What people don't know is that they were trying to kill Lincoln from 1861 forward. Um, there was no Secret Service, so Lamb and just stepped into that role. He appointed himself the bodyguard and kept Lincoln not only alive but working during the darkest moments of the Civil War. I mean, Lincoln needed a buddy. And, and you know, his wife uh, suffered herself, uh, not only from migraines, but I mean, they lost a child in the White House and she became almost unfunctioning. And Lamon was that guy that, that Lincoln could unwind with at the end of the day and who foiled the assassination attempts. And of course, the question is, why was Lamon not at Ford's Theater in 1865? And as Lamb would say, to understand that, you'd have to hear the whole tale. Um, but from a production point of view, to, to t tell this story on an independent budget is, I mean, it's just not possible. You can't recreate 1860 with less than a, the studio machine. But we found a way. And uh, what we did is we shot the whole movie in a green screen studio in downtown LA, all here in Los Angeles, keeping film business in LA. It's a big deal around here. Um, and the backgrounds are uh, being composited out of vintage photographs from the 1860s. So we're not recreating 1860. We are putting our, our cast in 1860. Where did you get the photographs? From the Library of Congress. Um, anybody can download them. The Library of Congress is an incredible resource. They, they not only have the photographs, they've digitized them at incredibly high resolution. Um, so, you know, anybody could have done this, but we did it, or are doing it. I mean, it's a massive, massive undertaking because we don't just put the people in front of the photograph. Um, we basically bring in the photographs, dismantle them into layers and parts, um, you know, sort of recreating layers of depth so that they can, what's called parallax, mm -hmm. uh, so that things that are closer can move at a different rate than things that are farther away. Uh, and that's what you know tells your eye and your brain that these people are in that world, not just standing in front of a, a flat picture. Uh, I've called this process cine collage uh, that, that we've invented, our team. And, um, and what's beautiful about cine collage in, in this context is, you know, if you're watching a big budget science fiction movie and, you know, Superman is flying through the sky or something, if that effect is 99.9% .9 correct, it looks wrong. Yeah. But with us, we're not going for reality at all. It's this beautiful cine collage look. Um, our actors are in color, the backgrounds are in black and white. Um, 
they're not in full color, we sort of desaturated them. But you can tell that the furniture and the actors uh, has, have a little bit of color and the backgrounds are black and white. And so the effect, you know, and then things, I was talking about parallax before, move in layers, but just in groups of layers, as opposed to in the real world where every object at a different distance from your eye moves individually. So the point is the overall effect is that we're going for something like, you know, 62% real. Yeah. Um, and because it's so far from real, the funny thing is, is that your brain wants it to be real. And, and now the viewer, you know, engages with the process and immerses himself in the experience um, and kind of gets lost in, in, in this look, in this world that we create. So you invented this process of cine collage. Before you started the feature, did you do a few test runs to see how it would work out, or did you just dive right in? Excellent question. <laughs> yes, I mean, this just has not been done before. Um, so we did extensive testing uh, last, last spring and summer to see if this would work. I mean, honestly, th this was insane what we did. It, it, it hasn't been done, nothing's been done like it. People use, you know, the, the sort of, you know, big compositing processes for science fiction movies, for action movies, uh, not to make backgrounds out of 150 year old photographs. Um, and we didn't know if it would work or not, but yes, we tested and tested and tested. Um, did you, did your actors get a chance to look at these photographs before they were doing the green screen work in order to contextualize where they were? Yeah, uh, for a while we actually tried to have a slide projector um, you know, and, and a screen on the sound stage so they could kind of have that reference. But you know, in the end, they, they, they didn't need it. It was good for them to see what the background would look like. Um, but we did place the furniture around them and we just got a great cast. All of them have background in theater. Um, and you know, you, you often hear in theater talking about a black box, which is, you know, small black box theater is one in which it's all about the, the characters and story and performance and you don't need you know, all, all the sets and, and stuff. And we thought of our studio as a green box. Um, <laughs> and where, where is the film going to end up? Where can we expect to see it and where can we find more information on it? Uh, you can find more information at savinglincoln.com. Uh, and please like us on Facebook. Yes. We, uh, we need the support of the public. It's, um, and in fact, we're embarking on a big David and Goliath adventure. Uh, where there's going to be two Lincoln movies out at the same time. Uh, we expect to, we hope to be in theaters in November. And there's, you know, there's enough interest uh, in what we're doing and in a Lincoln story that it, I'm pretty confident that it will happen. But we'll be up against the 8,000 pound gorilla. Steven Spielberg is doing his Lincoln movie oh, wow. <laughs> coming out in December with Daniel Day Lewis playing Lincoln. Um, but, you know, if you really love Lincoln, and so many people do, you need to see both films. They're focusing on the last couple months of the war and about Lincoln the politician uh, getting the 13th Amendment through Congress. And we're talking about Lincoln the commander in chief a man who was so, so sweet that, in his own words, he couldn't wring the neck of a chicken, you know, in charge of, of this war effort that resulted in, I mean, depending on estimates, six to 700,000 men dying uh, and many more injured. And it have played you, on him. Have you always been a big fan of Lincoln's? Yes, yes. Uh, I definitely have always loved Lincoln. Uh, my wife, Nina, and writing partner it's always actually been her specific dream to make a Lincoln movie um, and so when we delved into it you know we were both up for the challenge and but we didn't know how deep it would go um, it would just been a very exciting thing and it's just a, a, a story of a great friendship you know Lincoln everyone's heard of Lamb and they're gonna learn about with us um, and Lamb is the guy who introduced Lincoln at the Gettysburg Address you know so it's almost this little footnote that deserves his moment. In the and what are your goals for the future? Uh, we are um, we're starting to research our, our next movie, actually, um, which I won't say too much about now. Uh, but having invented cine collage, we feel that it can go a lot further, uh, and we'd like to, to explore that. And we've got a TV show idea as well uh, that would harness this process. 
And I think it's really exciting. You know, it can take you to another time and, and make things affordable um, and yet grand and exciting. And, uh, you know, I think we've got a lot to offer here. Great. So we'll be sure to check out the, the film on Facebook and on the website as well. Are there any other sites where we can follow your work? Uh, and there's a very fun Twitter feed. If you, if you do Saving Lincoln on Twitter, uh, we've got um, Ward Hill Lamman himself uh, tweeting and talking about knowing Abraham Lincoln and all the adventures and scrapes that he's getting into uh, during the Civil War. Uh, and you can interact with Ward Hill Lamb and right now uh, on Twitter. So check out Saving Lincoln there. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to see this film. And best of luck with all of your upcoming projects as well. Thank you, Katie. I really appreciate it. I'm Katie Allman reporting for TTN HD Production Live. <laughs>